These are post-op instructions from Mr. Walsh. Thank you. Monica? Hello. How is he? It's my father. Well, I'm happy to say he came through surgery very well, and you should be able to see him in about an hour. Mm -hmm. What wonderful news. Yeah. Thank you. Did you hear that, Mom? He's going to be all right. Thank God. I am so grateful for everything you've done. Don't cry, Mom. He'll be fine. If anything had happened to him, I don't know what I would have done. My husband is my whole life. Thank you, Doctor. You're welcome. Take care. What about your husband? Hmm? Oh, that. Yeah, I had one of those once. I wanted to explain to you about last night. Oh, you mean Duke's Club and uh, what's her name? Her name's Cheryl Stansbury, and it was strictly business, Monica. Oh, come on, Alan. Come on, you're just after your old tricks again. I know your every move, from your little rendezvous with Ms. Stan's boring to your little meeting with her this morning. You don't know what you're talking about. I know exactly what I'm talking about. You don't, Monica, but obviously there's no sense trying to convince you because you've got a severe attitude problem. Thank you so much for your diagnosis, Doctor. Uh, will I be getting more of the same, Monica, tomorrow at the stockholders' meeting? Oh, you mean attitude? Oh, I think you'll get a lot of that. In the meantime, Alan, just come off the contrite husband number. You're not here to explain last night. No, I came here because I'm trying to save our marriage. You're trying to save your neck. I don't have to do that, Monica. I've already paid off HDI the $12 million. It's over and done with. Well, I wouldn't count on that, Alan. See, tomorrow at the meeting, I plan to tell them how you stole that money. If you do that, I'm going to go to jail. Well, I'll bake you a cake. Who's going to bake one for you, Monica? Now, what is that supposed to mean? You make an announcement like that, you're going to have as much trouble as me. How? Because you're going to have to admit that you covered up the entire thing, which is going to create quite a few problems for you. So if I were you, Monica, I'd change my attitude. Mmm, these are delicious. You stop badgering me. I don't want breakfast. Well, at least have a croissant, dear. How and... can you talk about croissants? All I can think of is bread and water, which if Monica has her way when she goes into HTI this morning will be Alan's diet for the rest of his life. Oh, you're exaggerating, yeah, dear. Do you realize that in a matter of a few hours she can, she can have him arrested for extortion and embezzlement? I'm sure that Monica will do the right thing. So am I. Which is exactly what I'm afraid of. I'm going upstairs to get dressed for the meeting. Mother, there's plenty of time. There's no need to rush. Oh. Well, at least it's easier than staying here and watching your father twitch. I am not twitching. You are twitching, Edward. Excuse me. Honestly, Father, the way you speak to that woman... Don't tell me how to handle my wife. Do things your way and you end up in jail. I want to try a croissant. They're very tasty. For the second hundredth time, I do not care for a croissant. How can you be so smug? You ought to be down on bended knee begging your wife for forgiveness. What for? Well, for keeping you out of prison and keeping her name out of the paper. Listen, this family has gotten very used to publicity. Besides that, there's no story. I pay the $12 million back to HTI. And in addition to that, I made another $12 million. Need I remind you? One gives and one receives. <laughs> I don't understand your attitude. <laughs> What's so funny? <clears throat> That's what Monica and I were talking about yesterday, attitude. That's when she was threatening to expose me as a thief and a conniver at the stockholders meeting. But she'll do it, too. If she does, I'm going to have to make good on my counter threat. Oh, you wouldn't do that. That's adding fuel to the fire. She's already heated up way beyond the boiling point. Let me tell you something. I really simmered her down because if she blows the whistle on me, I'm going to blow it straight back on her. I'm going to tell the world that she covered my every move every inch of the way. You wouldn't. Oh, you watch me. <clears throat> Honestly, I don't know which one of you is worse. This isn't just between you and Monica. It involves all of us, not to mention a flock of legal fees. Alan, don't do it. My heart won't stand it. Don't get hysterical. Women get hysterical. Don't let them hear you say that. Herbert didn't have to put me in my grave. He left it up to you and Monica to handle. Please, sir, don't get hysterical. Excuse me. What is it, Jennings? Uh, there's a call from Mr. Quartermain. Oh, did they I'll say... I'll take it in here. Hello. Yeah. What? Well, what do you got? No, don't tell me that. No, there's nothing you can do about it. There's nothing anyone can do. Except you. Who is that? It's one of my spies from HTI. It's even worse than I thought. When Monica got to HTI this morning, why, she called in a battery of lawyers. She's in a pre-board meeting with them now. 
Doesn't frighten me. Well, it should. It scares hell out of me. She's doing it all for show, Father. Believe me. I expected exactly this. Just sit back and enjoy it. I don't know which one of you is worse. You know, you deserve one another. You're both selfish, self-centered, vindictive, vengeful, uh, so oh, stubborn, so... Oh, oh, Pig-headed. Yes, fine, fine. That's the way you want it, fine. But before you go into battle, will you turn over that $12 million profit that you've been sitting on, put it into the family account, I beg of you. I'm stubborn. You're so single-minded. The only thing that ever enters that head is money, money, money. The only thing I'm trying to do is protect it for you. It can't do you any good in prison. I'm not going to prison, Father, and neither is Monica. My wife may be a lot of things, but she's not stupid. Tell the lawyers to hold on to their briefs. I'm seeing Tiffany Hill first, then they can come back in. Good morning, Madam President. No small talk, please, Tiffany. What did you want to see me about? Oh, it's been one of those mornings, huh? Don't ask. Oh, darling, I don't have to. I got a little taste of that myself, you know, when you named me acting president. Although I don't understand how in the world you can do your job and stay sane. Well, contrary to popular belief, I have not lost my sanity. Oh, you know what I mean. I mean, this is a very demanding position. And I think you do it very well. I'm not just saying that. I mean, you know, there are so many little things that you have to keep up with. You know, minor details. Tiffany. To be aware of. You know, little things. Tiffany. You the Spratly. What did you want to see me about? Well, I wanted to know if you want to talk about what happened the other night at Dick's. I, I'm sure that is the last thing on your mind. Although, I don't know how in the world you can concentrate on business after what Alan did to you. I mean, I don't blame you for being upset at all. I mean, I've been there. <laughs> Man. Oh, swine. Oh, it's not so much exactly. Well, now that we both agree on that, is there something else? I do have a busy morning. Oh, well, I won't take up another minute. I just wanted to wish well in the meeting. Is there anything that you might want to tell me about what's on the agenda? Any surprises or, you know? I'll see you at the meeting. Uh, right. Oh, what time is the meeting? 11.30, sharp. Miss Culpepper, Miss Hill is leaving now. You can send the lawyers in. 7.30. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll be there. <laughs> With Sean. Oh, yes. I'm on my way right now to make sure that Sean is there. Oh, gentlemen. Hi. Hi. Thank you very much. Hi. Well, let's get down to it. We have a very delicate matter to deal with. This is your last chance to save your neck. First of all, you don't beg. Secondly, if I agree, what would you have me do? Whatever's necessary. I want you to go in there and do whatever you have to do to want to get her get to save you from going to prison. Why is it I get the feeling you're more concerned about your neck and the money? Well, I won't deny that's part of it. That's part of it? That's the whole reason for your fatherly concern? I'm, I'm sorry you feel that way. You're sorry. Your concern is touching. You'll understand if I don't thank you for it. I don't want your thanks. I don't want your money. I just don't want you to go to prison. I want you here, where you belong, safe with your family. I know we've had our differences before, but, and it's often been about money, but the bottom line is still the same. I thought you understood that. Uh, Alan, I just want what's good for you. I love you, son. Do you mean that? Well, of course I mean it. And your mother feels exactly the same way. We couldn't bear it if anything were to happen to you. No. It would kill us. Okay. I'll do whatever it is that I have to do. I'm doing it for you and I'm doing it for mother, okay? Monica! Don't you believe in knocking? We have to talk. Well, I have to talk, Monica. I have to apologize. Really? Listen, I am, I am so sorry for any other hurt that I may have caused you because you misinterpreted those innocent business meetings that I had with Cheryl, with Miss Stansbury. Is that it? Is that the apology? Yes, it is. It's from the bottom of my heart, too. Well, dig deeper. I beg your pardon? I want more. 
And you shall have more, Monica, because I owe you. I owe you so much more. That's why I did what I did. Which time? When you were stealing or when you were being unfaithful? I would never be unfaithful to you, Monica. I had to find a way. I had to find a way to, to get the $12 million back to HDI, and Cheryl Stansbury was the way. I had to take it. It or her? It, Monica. I just didn't want to let you down. Oh, why break a pattern? You do so nicely that way. You want to hurt me? I understand you. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yes. Yes, I do want to hurt you. Okay, then. You go right ahead and do it, Monica. I really do understand, but before oh, don't you do say it... anything I, else, I, I, Alan. I just... Don't. I know what you're going to say. I know before the words even fall out of your mouth that you're going to tell me you're going to spend the rest of your entire life making it up to me. Yes, I am. Is that enough? Not really. <laughs> what do you want me to do, Monica? You want me to get down on my knees? That would be interesting. You want me to get down on my knees, Monica, and grovel in front of you? Is that what you want? Sure. Sure, it might give me a whole new perspective on the man I'd like to see rot in jail. Okay, Monica, here I am. I'm on my knees and I'm, I'm groveling. I'm begging you to give me another chance, Monica. Please, please forgive me. I, I'm your husband. You're my wife. Oh, did you just think of that? No, I think about it all the time, Monica. I can't stand thinking about all the grief that I have caused you in our lives. But please, please, I beg of you, don't send me to prison. You know why? Because I'm already in a prison of my own making, Monica. Please, please forgive me. I beg you, I beg you to give me another chance, please. Sorry, Alan, I'm late for a meeting. Uh -huh. 